there, Year 7 health students. I hope you are going well on behalf of all of the health and PE teachers if you're watching this lesson video. Uh, hopefully we're all back at school on Friday and everything's going okay with the, the COVID numbers and fingers crossed that that is the case. Now there's a, there's a range of different lessons, so every one of your health, PE and sport lessons will be different this week. Um, so you just make sure that you're logging on, you're having a look at your compass um, lesson plan and then following all of the directions of your teacher and some of the teachers will make modifications so I might say something in this video that's slightly different than what your teacher's asking make sure you have read the lesson plan now if you're watching this video that means that you've come into your class and you've had a look at the lesson plan and you've clicked on the link that I've placed in this gap here which obviously I haven't made the video yet and it's going to ask you to do a few things. So the first thing I'm wanting you to do is I want you to go over into the resources tab of your health class. I want you to go into semester one and then term two all the way down to week seven. And there's a PowerPoint in here called communication. I'd love for you to download that PowerPoint. So it's a good time to pause the video, go and complete that task. And then once you've got the PowerPoint in front of you, you can come back to this video and press play. Now you'll notice that this PowerPoint starts off with a heading and that heading should be in your book and if you've read your lesson plan properly you would have already put this heading either in your workbook or in a new Microsoft Word document. So today we are talking about communication. Now if we have a look through this PowerPoint first thing it asks you to do is think. If we were in the classroom we would have done a brainstorm around this but I think it's just as powerful for you to have your own little time to think about this. You don't need to write your answers down but I do want you to give you some thought before we move into the next part of the lesson. So I want you to think about communication and how it might have changed over the years. Now within your life, over the last decade or more, but before that, and even if it means you stop and have a quick conversation with a parent or guardian or older brother or sister or a cousin or somebody who might be in your house, have a little chat to them and see what do you think how communication might have changed across the years. And then right now, at present, what are the different ways that we are able to communicate? So most of the time, we would think about being in person, obviously, and talking to each other. And right now, I'm communicating with you, and it might be only one-way communication, but you're watching a video of a teacher who has recorded this lesson for you, and you can pause it and rewind it and start it again, and that's a form of communication. So what are some other ways that we are able to communicate? Have a think about that. Then I would like you to follow this link. Now you might need to copy and paste it into your browser or you might need to right click on that link and go over to open link over here. And it's gonna take you to a YouTube video. It's a four minute video. It's about communication through the ages. And there's a few little spelling things in this one that make a few errors, but I would like you to pause my video now open this one up, press play, and have a watch of this communication video for me. Okay, hopefully you enjoyed that communication video, and it really is important that you didn't skip over that, you paused it, you went back to the lesson plan. I also did paste into our lesson plan for the day that YouTube link, so if you have had issues with the PowerPoint, that, list, that link is within there for you, okay? But it really is important that you've watched that video. It talks about all the way back when communication first began and how it's evolved, but what things have stayed with the communication, and whether it was marking on walls and now we write with a pen, and whether email started social media, so how electronic communication has changed things, and the telephone. I think it's really important that you've spent a bit of time watching that video. Now we flick back over to the PowerPoint and I want you to go on to page three. This is a page that we are going to discuss as a group in a Zoom call later on during this lesson. So we're just gonna quickly read through it and we're gonna ask questions so you can already start thinking about what your answers might be. Why is communication important? What influences the way that we communicate with people? Or what, what changes the way that we communicate with people? Explain why you might communicate differently in a conversation with your teacher when compared to a discussion with your parents. And even that word conversation and discussion, how are they different? 
And then what are some characteristics? And every time we use the word characteristics, it means what does it look like to have an effective form of communication? That means effective, it is working. So you don't need to write any answers about this at the moment. Those will be questions that we'll be asking you on the Zoom call later on. Now I would like you to start thinking about this and do some work around this. This is the definition. We communicate and express ourselves verbally and non-verbally, and communication means to deliver a message. And one of the things that's really important there is that non-verbally. We can say a lot without speaking. So I ask you now, what are some ways that we can communicate without words? What are some ways that if I'm looking at you during a conversation, you know how I'm feeling or what I mean by some of my actions or the way that I look? If I give you this look, what does that mean? If I give you this look, what does that mean? And if I'm slumped over in my chair or table, what does that mean? Or if I'm sitting back and relaxing, what does that mean? So we can pick up on different ways that people are trying to communicate things with us even before they've said any words or while they are saying words, it adds on top and gives more meaning. So I want you to, in your books, answer that question. What are some examples of non-verbal, without words, communication? So you can pause the video and have a go at that now. Okay, so we're bringing it back. This is really important for us to maybe take some notes down in our book as well. Part of communication is when we use our words or when we give body language, etc. However, most importantly to make communication effectively, we need to make sure that both people who are within the conversation are completing what we call active listening. Now, it's not just listening to words and sounds going into our ears. Active listening is much more than that. Let's have a look. Active listening means you've given your full attention and concentration to what someone's saying. You can't hear little birds chirping or a door opening. You are listening to the words that person's saying. You let them completely finish their thought or sentence before you form a response. The last few words in a sentence could completely change the meaning of something. So let them finish what they say. Keep eye contact with them. It shows interest. Because showing genuine interest means that the person will completely finish their thought. Ask them questions that are relevant to what they are telling you. Don't just, don't just say a question that's generic. Ask a question that uses the words that they have used in their conversation with you. And then respond in an active and constructive way. What that means is that you're not being overly negative all the time towards what the person is saying to you. You are thinking about how you can add and give positivity to a conversation. And I think that's really important when we're doing this active listening skill. And go back over to the PowerPoint, and this is the time where I'm going to ask you to join into the Zoom. We're going to complete this activity on Zoom. I'm going to be not arranging a single line of desks, obviously, but what I will be doing is I'll be sending people into different rooms, and when they are in those breakout rooms, they're going to be having conversations with people. And what's going to be really important is this stuff down at the end. At the end of your little conversation with somebody, and I bring you back into the room with everybody else on Zoom, I might randomly ask you to tell me what that person said to you. So it shows that you were actively listening. And I'll show you as well that if you are struggling to have a conversation with somebody that you don't know, we've given some conversation starters on slide seven of this PowerPoint. Once we've completed that Zoom activity, we're going to move on to the reflection task and this will be your end of the lesson where you're going to answer these three questions in your notes and in your books or Microsoft Word document. Once you've watched my video, the video from YouTube about communication through the ages, you've taken the notes about active listening and answered that question around nonverbal communication, You'll be joining the Zoom to complete our communication activity and then finishing the reflection questions. All of this is detailed in today's lesson plan. Good luck and your teacher should see you soon on Zoom.